Hello everyone, you're welcome to my channel Learn and Earn Academy and today in this video we are going to talk about Montago Chelmsford Reform Act of 1999. The Home Rule Movement and the rise of revolutionary terrorism mainly led the British authority to pacify the rising tide in India. Now this was the time when Indians were revolting against the British and the British had to do something good in favor of India so that the nerves of the people can be controlled. Now Chelmsford was the Viceroy of India and Montago was the Secretary Indian Council. They submitted a proposal in 1918 to British Parliament. As a result, Act of 1999 was passed and this is called Montago Chelmsford Reform. Now what happened in this reform is the number of members of the Council of Secretary of State which is Indian Council was fixed at two. Okay. So this was a form of representative government which was uh, brought by the Britishers for the Indians so that Indians could you know agree with Britishers and let them live and let them rule them. So British Britishers were slowly and steadily giving the powers to Indians in form of representative government and this was one first initial step. So number of members of Council of Secretary of State Indian Council was fixed as 12. Now among them three were Indians. So out of 12, three were Indians and half of its total members were to be chosen from among those who must have resided in India for at least 10 years. So half of them means six. Six people should have been people who have lived in India for at least 10 years. So they could be anyone. But three Indians were definitely there out of 12. Okay. Now it limited the powers of Secretary of States. So Secretary of State now had limited powers. The Viceroy was empowered to nominate as many as to his executive council as he wished. The councillors were nominated for five years. So this is how a form of representative government was brought in India by Britishers to pacify Indians. The central legislature consisted of the Council of State and Legislative Assembly. The upper house or Council of State consisted of 60 members and among, three th among them 33 were to be elected and 27 were to be nominated by the Viceroy. Now each province in India was allotted a fixed number of representatives to represent in the Council of State for five years. The Legislature Assembly or the lower house consisted of 144 members out of which 103 were to be elected and rest of the members were to be nominated. The life of the Legislative Assembly was for three years. The franchisee of both the houses was restricted which differed in different provinces. In the Viceroy was empowered to summon, prorogue and dissolve the chambers. The first speaker was to be nominated by Viceroy and after that the speakers would be elected. The provincial legislature consisted of only one house known as the Legislative Council. The number increased now what was a beforehand. The power of the councillors also increased a little. However, the Viceroy had little control over the council. The communal electorate system was further enhanced. It created provision of separate electorates for six Anglo-Indians and Christians in Europe. And now this is where the Britishers played the game. They brought in communal electorate system. They had provision for separate electorates for Sikhs, Anglo-Indians, Christians and Europeans. The Act of 1919 introduced diarchy in the provinces. Accordingly, the rights of the central and provincial governments were divided in clear-cut terms. The way we have central government and state government, the similar way diarchy was introduced by Britishers in 1990 through Montago Challenge for Reform. The central list included rights over defense, foreign affairs, telegraph, railways, postal and foreign trade. The provincial list dealt with the affairs like health, sanitation, education, public work, irrigation, jail, police and justice. The powers which were not included in the state list vested in the hands of the centre. In case of any conflict, the reserved and the unreserved power of the state 
sanitation in local self government was also dealt with the governor had its final say the diarchy was introduced in 1921 in bengal madras bombay up mp punjab bihar orissa and assam in 1932 it was extended to the northwest frontier province no doubt the act of 1919 reformed some of the maladies of the morley mentor reforms of 1909 and introduced diarchy still it was not free from shortcomings limited franchise to no clear division of powers between the center and the states viceroy authority over every matter at sector were some of the defects of the act of 1919 which brought dissatisfaction among indians as well so this was basically an act which somehow tried to console the indians and the britishers were buying time to stay in india for some more years